Hey everyone, my name is Kelvin and this is my channel. So welcome back. And the last video, this is what we've accomplished. We've created a layout page. Our actual homepage is just this line of text here. And we've also created a not found page, which we need to navigate to any routes that we don't have. And once you do, you'll see the scarecrow and some text saying that there's nothing available here. So let's go back to the homepage. And in this video, we're going to work on displaying some of the data that we have. So I'm going to go back to the terminal and open this in bin. And let's open up the homepage, so index.tsx. Now the data that we have is held in a jobs property inside of the home props. And since this is an array, I want to make an individual card for each array item. So inside of components, I'm going to make a new module for jobs and then start with the job card. And then to make this a module, let's also make sure that we create an index.tsx or .ts file and be sure to export everything from the file that we created, which is job card. And let's go back to the card component and let's first define the properties so that this component knows what values we'll have. Now we've already set up the API interface for the type here and we know that we're going to get each of all of these properties so as a shortcut our interface here could just extend from the github job that way we can open up the params and just auto complete with everything that we need and i'm just going to go ahead and quickly get all of that so company logo title location and created that and we're going to be using each of these properties so first, I'm going to skip the image part because that takes a little bit of extra work. But underneath that, we'll have a div where we're going to have all of our job information. So in H2, we'll have the company name, the title in the H3 as a pseudo subtitle thing. Underneath that, we're going to put in the type. And this type is going to say either part time or full time. And then underneath that, let's add a div for two spans where we can add the location and create it at. And we'll come back to this, but let's just go ahead and add it to the home page so that we can see this in action. So I'm going to replace the content here with the jobs array, and we're going to map through it to render a job card for each of them. And we're going to spread out all the properties into it and make sure that we add a key using the ID. And the key is just for React to know about these array items, and it could also do some optimization on updates for us. So we don't have to worry about it and it's not going to look pretty but we could go ahead and see all of the jobs in cards so i believe this is a card and then this is another card now it's going to take some work before it starts looking like the mock-up of these over here but that's what we're going to do next and to do that i'm also going to add a library where we can add these icons now, if you go to dev challenges and go through all of the directions, it will tell you that we're using material design icons, which is widely available. So instead of using the ones linked here, because they're going to give us just a CSS style sheet that we have to download and everything, I'm going to go and install a React library that wraps all of those icons and makes it easy for us to use. And it's called MDI React. So the MDI stands for Material Design Icons. But once we get that, let's go ahead and create a, another module here called common and we're gonna have an icon file inside of it, so icon.ts. And here we could import and export all the icons that we're gonna be using. And I just like this because we're not gonna be using all the icons and it just makes it easier to see all the ones that we are using. I'm also gonna rename some of these because it's a little easier for me to understand mnemonically that this icon's a clock because schedule could actually kind of mean anything. Speaking of which, to find these icons, uh, you could, uh, somewhere here, uh, go to the material icon library and kind of just scan through all of these to find the ones that you need. For the most part, it's named the same, so it's not going to be too different. It may go from snake case to Pascal case, but other than that, it's pretty straightforward. Okay, so let's see what we want to do all right all right let's go back to the editor and i'm gonna open up the job card as well as we need a css file so i'll make a css module called job.module.css and i'll just put it on the left side so the first step as always is to import the css so then we have access to all of the class names 
And let's start with the class name of card. So let's go with a full width and a background color of white, as well as the four pixel border radius, which is kind of used everywhere. And then this card also has a box shadow. And this exact value I just got from the Figma information. All this other stuff is kind of just me feeling it out. So the margin for spacing. And remember that when there's two values inside a margin, the first one is for top and bottom. And the second one is for side to side. So X and Y, or is it Y and X? So the next class name I'm gonna add is CSS.info. And we kind of need this so that display flex doesn't shrink it down. And then I'll add padding for spacing on that as well. And then within info, I'm going to select the H2 so that we can specifically make it Roboto as the font family, as well as being a font size of 0.75 and bold. And the next thing I want to do is actually wrap a div around these things here because we want this to kind of display as a line. So info line as the class name and most importantly, so that we can justify the space between so that the full time thing as well as these two are completely separated on left and right. So let's take a look at where we're at. All right. I need to restart. There we go. That's better. So we're almost there. Let's go back to the thing. All right, so next is to add a job type to the full-time thing, because if we look at the mock, it's inside of a little square tag button looking thing, and we need to recreate that. So the biggest feature is going to be that border, so solid with the color of text. Make sure that we add our normal border radius, hold the text, and add some padding. And that will turn into the uh, not bad. Now next, let's add a class to both of these bands. And the class name I chose is going to be icon line, which is going to have gray text, a smaller font size of 0.8 run. And I am really abusing display flex everywhere, but that's kind of my thing. And we haven't added the icons yet, but I'm going to add the CSS class for it. So inside of icon line, we're going to target the SVG. Give it some definitive height and weight, height and width, as well as some margin, so it's a little separated from the. I think that's everything we need for this CSS. So let's close it. So back in here, we could import the icons, and that'll be the clock icon as well as the globe icon, and we just need to put it inside of this band. So right here, this is the globe, and then for the created at, we'll add the clock. So that it looks like, oh, I messed up somewhere. Ha. I meant to actually put this here. Because the class applies to both of these bands. That's a little better. We can do better than that. The only thing I really want is some margin left on the second icon, or the second icon text. So there's a little space in between, which is this little bit here. But I'm okay with that. Now the next big issue is that we don't want to display the timestamp like this. We want to display the time from today. So we're going to create another file inside of lib, which is all the non-JSX related files. And I guess I'll call it date.ts. And we're gonna create a helper function called from today, which will take a date string and return a string. But the idea with the logic inside of this function is that we're gonna have two date times. So one for now and one add the date. So then we can subtract the two and have the time difference. Now this is a TypeScript thing, but these dates need to be treated as numbers for this subtraction to work. And then this is gonna be a huge number and that's gonna be all the milliseconds or nanoseconds uh, between these two dates. So we need to get the day diff as well. Now before we do that, we need the day in milliseconds. So there are 24 hours in a day, there's 60 minutes in a hour, 60 seconds in a minute, and 1000 milliseconds in a second. Now we can use the two and make sure that we round this, but we're gonna divide the time diff by the day, so we have a day diff, and this is where we're gonna calculate the string. So essentially we want to return the day diff days ago, but because of language, we need to say, day for one day, days for plural days, and then if it doesn't match either of these two, 
we can return that the job posted was posted today. So now we can use this function inside of our component. So let's go back to the job card. And we're going to surround the created at here with paren. So we say from today. And that should give us. So now we can look at the postings. So this one was posted two days ago. We have three days ago, and so on and so forth. I was kind of hoping that there would be one that was posted today so that I could show it off, but I guess I'm just not lucky with when I was recording, but that's okay. So there's two last things that we need to do before this job card is complete. The first one is going to be easy. Uh, we just need to get the link from next link and make sure that we add it as the most outer component so that we can link this card to the job page. Now I hate doing this with template strings because it messes up the syntax highlighting inside of them, but uh, that's fine. Anyways, we want to go to slash ID, but if we do a slash to ID, our 404 page won't work. So we need to have a prefix route. So I'm going to do slash page slash ID, and this will be where we're going to put our individual job page. The next thing is we're going to need a image component. And if this is not quite straightforward. So first, let's make a new component file. So this will be job image.psx. All right, so nothing about the image component is simple, not even the TypeScript for it. So first, to type out the job image interface, we need to highlight image. And this entire thing is going to be extended from our job image interface. So we'll do an extends. And this is a detailed HTML props, image HTML attributes, HTML image elements, HTML image element. All right, so that's step one. And this actually should be named props. Okay, let's. Okay, so normally in React, if we don't have to worry about server side rendering, we can do spread out the props here and everything will be fine, right? And we're going to start with that actually. So in, in job card, we just need to replace this comment with job image sending in the logo as the source and the company as the alt okay. let's see how that looks in our browser don't worry about the sizing now we'll fix that in a little bit but everything works right except the broken images without server-side rendering you can normally just do an on error and fix it that way but we can't do that within Next.js framework because of server side rendering. So we have to go kind of in a roundabout way of making this work. First, I want to show the mock up, and that's because we have something that's intended if the image breaks, just having a blank screen that says not found. This actually makes it a lot harder because we can't just use a fallback image. We're going to do some HTML. All right, so let's go back in here and and I'm first going to surround this with a div. And I'm going to have a class name here just so that we can keep track of things. So this is going to be the image container. And we'll still be using the same job module CSS. But I want to add the not found fallback here as the image placeholder. First thing that we'll need is some state. And this state will take care of whether or not the image has been loaded. So as mentioned, on error doesn't work with server side rendering. However, on load does, and that's where we can do set loaded is true. If and whenever it is false, we'll be showing the image placeholder. Now for on load to work, we have to wait until the page is rendered client side. So we need another use state here, and this is what's called hydration. The idea is that the page is being rendered server side, but it's not fully hydrated until all the JavaScript is ready to be loaded. Now there's an easy way to check for that inside React, and that's just so that we call use effect. Whenever this is this component is mounted, we can set the state of hydrated to true, which let's also make sure that the default is false. And then for on load to work, we need to wait until it's hydrated. So we'll do hydrated and to render the image conditionally. So once JavaScript is loaded on the page, then the image will be added to the DOM which will then call on load. And then if the image actually does load, it'll set loaded to true, which will turn off the image placeholder. But if the image is broken, this event will never fire. So after hydration, we need to hide the broken image. So we'll add a style prop here. I will display none. 
conditionally. So let's move that to a variable of should display so that it's going to display either block or display none. And that'll be should display. And this is a little confusing because we need to render this, but we don't want it to show. So we have to hide it with CSS. Now, the next thing on the mock that I want to show is that we're going to reuse this job image on the job page, but it'll be a smaller size. So because of that, we have to create some additional styling. So let's create a container style. And this will also mean that we're going to create a prop here called size. So we'll destructure this by spreading out the normal image props and just getting the size here. But this is where we need to hard code the height and width with that size and put the container style there. Now we're also going to create another style prop called style, and it's going to reuse container style. But this is so we could change the size of the font. Now I don't know why height and width, the CSS object will read a number as pixels, but inside of font size it doesn't. So I'll need to add the pixels. This number will also be size and save for line height. Uh, and also for the font size, we're dividing this by one fifth to make sure that it's smaller than the outer square. And why one fifth? I don't know. I just played with the, some numbers and this is the one that helped the best to me. Let's make sure that we add the placeholder style. I don't know, this, this is just called style. That's better. This should be multiply. Now the last thing we need to do is create normal CSS, some things that aren't dynamic for these classes. So let's open up job module again. And I'm gonna scroll down. So we can do image container and image placeholder. So the things in here is not too surprising. We're rounding out the corners and we're making sure it has some margin. We will also want to set overflow to hidden so then it hides whatever is outside of the border radius. Image placeholder is making sure that we have a font family of Robota. We'll do a lighter gray using the same color as the background. And then for the text, it's this dark BD, BD, BD gray color. And then we're using these two width and text line to center the text in it inside the box. And then lastly, we need to style the actual image tag so that it doesn't stretch weird inside the flex. And we can achieve that by doing a max width of 100% and align self uh, center. Right, and now we can check out our jobs. Oh, I must've done something wrong. Well, I got the not found working correct. Well, not exactly. Image container, image placeholder. Oh, we're not sending in size. <laughs> That's why. Okay, so that is an easy fix. We just need to go to the job card and add another prop here for size. And this is gonna be 90 pixels for the square. That finishes up the job card. The next thing to do is when we click on this, actually have an endpoint for the job page. And I think I'll save that for the next video. In any case, I hope you enjoyed this video, especially the image thing, because that took me a lot longer than I'd like to admit. But yeah, I'll see you all next time.